Good evening, Cross Culture and friends. Hey, it is time to pray. It's Sunday night, 7 o'clock. God is good and still on the throne. Tonight we're going to pray through a couple of things. So if you tune in this into this now or tune into this later, it makes a little difference. I want you to pray the same thing. I want you to pray the same way. We need peace. We need perspective. We need understanding of what is occurring, times and seasons, the things that are going to unfold, the things that are unfolding, the things that are being said. We need to tune in. We need to hear very clearly that uh, the groundwork is being laid and uh, lines are being drawn in one way or another. And um, this is what the church is for. This is what we do. Whenever evil begins to raise its head above the fray, whenever it begins to claim victory and power, it is the church that is meant to call it out. It is the church that is meant to stand. So as we pray tonight, I don't plan on praying too long, but I want to pray three things. All right? I like threes. You know that. One, I want to pray for peace for the heart of the believer. I think that we need to calm ourselves in many ways so that we could see what is exactly what exactly is going on. And it allows us to accept the process that we are facing. There are times that we go through persecution and struggle, and even as I said before, when when we were, you know, the, the state wanted to move in and close down churches, and you notice that happened abroad. You, you do notice now that uh, these same people are talking about opening. It's very interesting, is it not? Um, there's also other discussions taking place, and we need to tune into what it is. We need to speak up for the defenseless, the weak, and the wounded. That's our job. But get us ready, oh God. Uh, secondly, there's peace for our homes. I know many of you have got the news on 24-7. Can I give you a tip? Turn off your phone. Turn off your news. Turn off your phone. Turn off your news. You need to get alone with God without the distractions without the incursion into your life, because the enemy sometimes teaches us or, or tries to teach us, just like Pavlov's dogs, right? That, uh, that busyness is a great thing. And uh, so when the opportunity to get busy is there, we get excited. But if we're not alone with God, then we become distant. And then we become calloused. Then our ears get deafened to uh, the things that we need to know and last. This may surprise some, but I, I'm praying uh, that we are readied for revival. That we are ready for revival. You say, Pastor John, I see so many goofy things going on. How, how are you thinking revival? Oh, this is when it starts. This is when it starts, kids. You look through history and you, you take into account what unfolds in the church under persecution. The church, when targeted as an enemy, um, things happen. But we need a revisitation, a visitation of the Spirit. All too many churches are very dry. There is no, uh, no anointing. There's no oil left in any of the lamps. And it's time for the Spirit of God to return and fall upon man. To convict our hearts. To get us out of our own way. And to teach us the things that we need to be taught so we can see not through the lenses of injury and anger, but through the, the lenses of anointing that God gives us as he begins to cleanse us, as he begins to speak new life into us and, and to bring to life dead places and to put to death things that have to go. So join me tonight as we pray. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be together. Lord, and uh, as you have declared that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there. And so sometimes this is as close as you can get. But Lord, you know our hearts and you know the things that we are longing for. And the things that we hope to see and the desires of our heart, God, that they would be unfolded. But first and foremost, test those desires. That they would be of you, that they would be written by you, that they would be given from you for the sake of of not only our eternity, but those that you have called us to influence. Let no place in us, Lord, be reserved for anger and anxiety. Let hopelessness be far from us. Let us be firmly rooted 
Let us be built up in the reality and the truth of your word. Let the day's affairs not hinder our ability or our willingness to praise you, but instead all the more, Father, that we would find that quiet place. And just as it was that Daniel was threatened if he was to go to pray, so too, Lord, let us rejoice in the opportunity to be resisted for your sake. For you declared that you were hated and therefore we would find the same treatment, that we would not be disheartened. In fact, we would be encouraged. Father, that we would calm ourselves before you and accept the process you are taking us through and the things that you are taking us to. Lord, we know that we would not get there on our own. We would not choose the easy journey. We would not choose conflict. We would, we would choose our own way, Lord. And even as it was destroying us, we would claim it was best. But Father, you bring us from death to life. You cause us to exchange those things within us that would, would harm us, that would depress us for the things that would give us joy and everlasting peace. God, I pray for, for clear eyes and clear hearts, for hearts that desire purity. Father, as we begin to dispossess the things that the world has tried to offer us, we will gain a better perspective of the things that are going on. The will of man has always been the will of man. And the will of God has always been the will of God. And the difference between the two, Father, and what brings us peace is the will of man can change, but the will of God is certain and sure. It's always good. Lord, and your desire is to always prosper us. Forgive us, Lord, when we question such. Forgive us when we look around, God, and we, we ask ourselves question about the state of affairs when all men have free will. And out of the same mouth, Lord, Blessing and cursings can be spoken, but you have called us to bless. You have called us to speak life. Lord, I pray that you give us the strength to weather the coming storms, that we do so without confusion, but instead you find us approved. You find our causes certain and sure. You find our hope firmly planted and who you are, and the people that you have called us to be. Lord, I pray that at every point the enemy would come and work to bring us to panic, or even pessimism, Father, you would encourage us and that your spirit would speak as we read your word. Lord, throughout your word were great men of God, and some even got depressed at times, Father, because things just were not panning out, and you came to remind them. There were thousands upon thousands making the same stand. Lord, we know there is much worry and confusion right now. Many people are scared, wondering what to do. Father, if it be me, if it be anyone else, whoever it takes, Lord God, to rise above the fray and to begin to call people home, call them to certainty, call them to hope, call them to life, Father, then do it. Lay the plan before them. Set out a path that is unmistakable. Protect them, O God, from the pitfalls that come. From the temptation, Lord God. From the traps that men lay, Lord Jesus. For going too far. For asking too much. But Lord, this is my prayer. This is what I ask tonight. And I, I invite you to pray with me. Breathe life into the church of America. Breathe life into the church of America. Save us from ourselves, O God. For we have deluded ourselves with confidence that should not belong. We have mistaken feelings for the presence of your spirit. They are not the same. We have confused Charisma with character, they are not the same. Make us a people of hope, which means that our eyes are truly set upon you and our ears are attuned to the things that you are saying and the things that you are doing. Lord, bring us what it is that we need to accomplish your desire day after day. Cause us to be aware and ready for whatever attack may come upon the church or the people of God. 
that we would stand strong, that we would stand firm, that we would be united. Second thing tonight, Lord, I pray peace for our homes. Teach us to work hard and to make you the priority, God. Lord, the enemy will sometimes come and tell us how tired we might be, but it is you that is the giver of life and the giver of strength. That we would focus on the things that you have done and said, and we would live that in front, not only of our spouses, but in front of our children, in front of our neighbors. Let us not grow weary in doing good, but instead let us set ourselves firmly before you, drawing every bit of strength that we have from you. Listening, when you tell us to rest, we rest. When you tell us to go, we go. Just as it was for the children of Israel, a cloud by day and fire by night. So too, God, lead us. Help us to lead our homes to, to the victory you have called us to, to have. Help us to strip away what should not be in our households and cast out those things that cannot remain. Lord, as we did a few weeks ago when we anointed our doorposts, so too, again, I invite those who are watching to do the same after we are done praying tonight. For those of you with children, anoint them as well and pray over them a protection. Father, that this next generation would rise well above wherever their parents may be that they would be strong, that they would be certain, that they would be sold out. That the threats of the enemy cause them to pray. Let the howl of the wolves in the distance not cause them panic, but instead that they would be prepared, that they'd be ready, that they would be fearless, O oh God. Bring us to a point of sincere and true love. Let us put away all falseness and pretense, but instead with sincerity, God, begin to pray over our families and our communities. Lord, as we pray, God, that we would pray that our hearts would be aligned with you, that we pray over our children, that their lives would be in step with your plan, and that you would strengthen us so that we would be the leaders, the parents, the grandparents, the aunts, the uncles, brothers and sisters, whatever relationship it is, we would be the people in the lives of those you have called us to and the people that you have called us to be, that we would lead well, that we would serve you well. Lord, as we defend our homes, we teach the difference between what is right and what is wrong, what is light and what is darkness. That we would now allow nothing in that would defile the peace of our homes or cause our children to question. Lord, teach us to be careful about what we see and what we say so that we would not wound the hearts of the innocent with our anger and our aggravation, that we would protect them from the things that the world would desire to use to destroy their innocence. But God, we would cherish every moment that you have given, with, given us with them, with our loved ones, Father. Lord, make us strong so we will not bend or break when the tests and the trials come. Teach us not to worry. In our weariness, Father, teach us to stand. Lord, teach us to be encouragers when we see the arms of those who are fighting become weary. God, when we, we see their legs begin to buckle, that we would stand in the gap. We would lift them up. We would pray for their restoration, O oh God. For the war will be waged and victory will be had. Teach us to be patient, O oh God. Lord, as we stand against the tide that seeks to break upon the shore, to, dra to dash us against the rocks, Lord, you will found us. 
You will stand us up. You will erect an, a, bar a barrier against the onslaught. The enemy will threaten many things, but he will not prevail. He will growl, he will roar, but those who are marked, those who have stood will continue to stand. Their way is certain and sure. Their feet are upon the path. Their light is the word of God and their hope is Christ eternal. For much has been said. Many things have been whispered. But the pettiness of man decides nothing. It will be the power of God. It will be the plan of God. This, this is certain. In each and every season that we face, Father, that we will remember our hope is in you. Our hope is in you. And last, that you would prepare the church for revival. That you would prepare us prepare us as the church for revival. God, that the word of God would be spoken, your word, and the things that should be prayed in accordance to your word would be prayed. That men of God would no longer seek their own way, but instead they would seek yours. When the day comes and the doors are open. We want to meet you there. Fill that temple till it is overflowing. God, until we can't even stand in your presence, I pray that the fire fall and begin to burn away those things that can, cannot stay. That as the groans begin, as the pain begins, Lord God, in the purging, you will have a pure bride. Your church will be spotless. I pray that those who claim to be of it would stay for the purification process. I pray they would hold on, that in the grip of, of all of it, Lord Jesus, in the midst of all of it, those things that must be stripped away, the enemy will speak and he will try to say that all the norms are being erased in an individual's life. But Lord, you are taking from them those things that seek to harm them. Let us not forget that you are the good and faithful, that you are the mighty and the true. You are the healer, you are our hope, you are our promise, you are our salvation. No one can stand before you. No one can lay claim to your throne. Only the faithful can capture your attention. And those who resist, Father, you will resist. And it is for their own sake that you do. You will not give way. There is nothing, Father, in you that will bend or break. And this is why there is peace. We can always find you in the same place. Bring us home, O oh God. Bring the church home. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, y'all. Keep praying. Pray, 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 pray. And listen, I want to teach you something real quick. Maybe it seems weird, but I feel like it's necessary before we get off the phone, or get off the, the thing tonight. Some of you are way, I get, I get texts and different things at points or just on Facebook and whatever else. There is a point that you have to prepare your heart for information. Okay, and you do this by praying. And as you encounter things in your daily life, you pray to understand them. But if you are inundating yourself with all the information out there, you are going to be overwhelmed constantly. It is not good for you, all right? What would be better, and trust me in this, what would be better is that you begin your day with the word and you're praying. And then as you read the news or encounter things, you allow the spirit of God to test it, okay? And by this, he either affirms it 
or he tells you it's garbage. And you have to be open to whatever it is. And it may not be that it's wrong. It just may not be for you. It may not be for you for right now. The Lord knows what we can handle. He understands the fights that we can be in. And he doesn't call us places that we shouldn't be. He brings us to the places that he has prepared us to be. And I want you to be comfortable with that. All right? God is faithful no matter what man does. No matter what man does, God is faithful. So I love you guys. I'm praying for you. This, this will all come together. This will all come together. Rest. See you soon.